Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. The shooting incident last night left two men dead and a child in hospital. Police are now on the hunt for the gunman. That story straight ahead. The DNA says enough is enough when it comes to rolling blackouts. That story straight ahead. Flood damage takes over the East Hill Post Office. That's coming up straight ahead. Plus, why the PLP chairman says the FNM sold out to Sarkis's Merlion. Welcome to our news. I'm Christina McNeil. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, two men are dead and a young boy is in hospital after they were shot in Pearedale off Wolf Road last night. Police say gunmen opened fire on the victims before fleeing on foot. Dana Smith tells us more. Everybody is like devastated from it. Everyone is devastated from it and all we can do right now is pray. We're trying to just keep a steady head and everybody come together. Do what we could do for him. Veronique Rigby identified herself as the grandmother of eight year old Vonti Coakley, who was just one of three shot last night. A group of men was standing just to the western side of the street here at Peardale. Then three individuals emerged from nearby bushes or alarm with handguns and fired a number of shots into the crowd. As a result, two adult males were shot to the body, a young with a young child who was also shot. Chief Superintendent Clayton Fernander said one of the men died at the scene and the other in hospital. Young Avante was shot as he was walking home from a nearby water pump in the area. Family members say he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's really cool. There's too much violence in this country. Too many and too many innocent people are getting involved. They're getting hurt for nothing and I just don't see it right. There's some way, somehow, there's got to be an end to all of this gun violence. After the shooting, the three gunmen reportedly fled the scene on foot. At the scene last night, Fernandez said police were still trying to piece together what happened. But we don't have a motive for the shooting at this time, but we want to appeal uh, to members of the public who lives in this area. It was early in the evening, who would have been passing whatever little information that they could share to assist in trying to advance uh, this investigation. Uh, feel free to reach out uh, uh, to us. Thanks, Dana. Well, police are now asking members of the public to look out for two men they want to question in connection with that shooting. The first is 18-year-old Julio Edwin DeVoe of Morley Street. Police say DeVoe has a dark brown complexion and stands about 5 feet 9 inches tall. Police also want to question Quintino Ronaldo Carey, also known as Cyber, of Fraser Allotment off Soldier Road and Union Village. Carey has a dark brown complexion and stands about 5 feet 6 inches tall. Police say DeVoe and Carey are considered armed and extremely dangerous. Members of the public are advised not to approach them, rather contact police immediately. In other news, months of rolling blackouts and an expected rise in the price of electricity this month are not sitting well with the Democratic National Alliance. Members of the DNA voiced their outrage during a demonstration outside Bahamas Power and Light's headquarters this morning. Our Jasmine Brown was there and has more in this report. Members of the DNA were out in full force this morning as they protested outside the power company. <laughs> Nearly 100 members of the DNA lined Blue Hill Road carrying signs and chanting their frustrations during a protest outside BPL headquarters. In the sea of green was FNM member Rodney Moncur, who joined the protest. DNA leader Branville McCartney says the frustrations cross party lines as it's evident that people are fed up. It is just ridiculous that we as Bahamians are suffering the way we are in the high prices that we have to pay and the outages that continue to go on in this country. It, 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 is, it is a discomfort and it causes businesses to continue to lose business. Rolling blackouts have impacted thousands of residents in New Providence this summer. Earlier this week, BPL announced that customers can expect an increase in the fuel surcharge attached to their electricity bill during this month. 
BPL corporate communications manager Arnett Ingram said today that the company understands the frustrations of its customers, but they can expect some relief as soon as those rental generators come on stream later this week. But DNA deputy leader Chris Mortimer says they need more than just quick fixes. We need a real fix to this. And when, uh, when we talk about a real fix, not rental generators, we are talking about a paradigm that at the end of the day that sees the cost of electricity come down in this country. Both McCartney and Mortimer say it's time to seriously look at implementing cheaper and cleaner ways of producing energy. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. And the Bahamas Public Service Union is threatening to shut every post office down if government does not move employees out of the general post office by November. This after the building experienced severe flooding today, damaging packages. Giorgio Sturr reports. Working conditions here at the East Hill Post Office take a turn for the worse today. As employees arrived to work, they met the majority of the building underwater. Damaged packages, a collapsing ceiling, and two feet of water greeted employees as they arrived at the East Hill Street Post Office this morning, forcing officials to send them home at 10 a.m. A note posted on the door read, due to maintenance issues, the post office will be closed temporarily until further notice. But on the inside of the building, the remaining employees scramble to separate damaged packages from those that could be salvaged while maintenance workers scoop gallons of waters off the floor. President of the Bahamas Public Service Union John Pinder told our news that complaints started coming in from yesterday that the building was leaking but reports sent to officials were ignored. We have a flood going on in here. Water's pouring under the roof. You know you can go in and get a shower if you wish to. And they expect for the staff to continue to stay here and sort meals and deal with parcel meals. If not, um, the union is being hired and the people are being unreasonable. But how can you ask human beings to wake in these type of conditions? How can you do that? You saw the size of the pieces of the ceiling that fell out this morning. Had that hit somebody, that person would have died probably on the spot. Minister of Labor Shane Gibson identified Independence Shopping Center as a possible new location in August. Gibson said they were only waiting for the finalization of a public-private partnership. Pinder said working conditions at the building continue to deteriorate while he's hoping that the government will honor its promise to have the workers out of the building by the end of October. The government has advised that by October these people, persons are supposed to have been in their new site. Our information is that new site was supposed to, first it was supposed to have been Town Center Mall, where it would have only taken them about six to seven weeks to actually conform what they needed. Next, we heard it was now moving to Tony Darling Highway, a building which they were supposed to have purchased in 2013. I understand that it cost then about between nine and nine point five million. I'm hearing now. The cost escalated to some $16.5 million. Pinder warned that if employees are not out of the building by November 1st, the union will be forced to shut every post office down. Governor, notice now, when you see October 31st come and the people are still in here, come the 1st of November, we're going to shut down every post office. That's the only way we can get some Shut all down. Just so the air traffic controllers could get the minister to meet with them immediately. We will shut down every post office in this country come the 1st of November if this situation isn't resolved. Reporting for our news, I'm Giorgio Stara. In other news, Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Bradley Roberts is accusing the free national movement of representing the interests of Bahamar developer Sarkis's Merlion by recruiting three of the project's prominent former employees to run on the FNM's ticket in the upcoming election. It is an established fact that Denise Diagula is the most peace surrogate for Sarkis is million, and has been so for more than a year. He sat on Bahama Board of Directors and was a part of the conspiracy to deceive the government and the people of the Bahamas on the true fiscal health of Bahama while the government sought to assist the, assist the developer in completing the project. According to Roberts, FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis has lost his way and is exerting all of his effort to save his political soul. Minnis is naive and sadly mistaken to conclude that the developer's unseemly behavior was a function of personality. Also, the last time Dr. Minnis tried to save his political soul, 
he ended up with the LOI scandal on his hand that he seeks to sweep under the proverbial carpet daily. Robert says any self-respecting FNM knows that Minnis is selling out the true values of their party. Of Dr. Minnis, express commitment to representing the interests of Sarkis Ismailian and reports of him agreeing to parachute into leadership of his organization, the likes of Saki's employees, Marvin Dames, Jeffrey Lloyd. Reasonable Bahamians and intelligent FNMs everywhere are forced to ask, has Dr. Minnis sold out the FNM lock, stock, and barrel? Come on our news. The Chamber of Commerce is still waiting for details of the Bahamar claims process, plus the details of a huge celebration set for the Bahamas Olympic team this weekend. That's coming up when our news returns.